Hello and welcome, today I want to show you how I made this stylized explosion effect in Unity Game Engine. So let's get straight into it. The main component of this effect is its shader. Here I made a small example of how the shader works. It's basically made of two Fresnel effects combined with the noise texture that control its dissolve, as you can see here. And we control the bright color and the dark color dissolve separately. Now let's open up the shader. Here we can see how it works. So let's start with the dark color. First, we sample some noise texture. I made this stylable noise texture. Then we add the Fresnel effect, but we first apply the one minus node because we want to dissolve from the outside inwards. Then we subtract our value bar slider, which we multiply by two, because when we add the Fresnel effect with the noise texture, the maximum value is actually two. Next, we put that into the smooth step node and in the edge2 value, we input our smooth step custom value. Finally, we split the output. One goes into the multiply node, which we multiply by our dark color, and the other goes in straight to the alpha value. Now for the light color. We basically have the same configuration with sampling the noise texture and adding the Fresnel effect with minus one applied to it. Then we have another slider, which controls the dissolve. We subtract that, add the smooth step node, saturate it and then multiply it by our fire color or bright color whatever you want to call it and then finally we add the two colors and input to the base color node the only difference here is i set the fresnel effect to be the power of one while in the dark color i set the fresnel effect to be the power of 0.5 now let's see again how the fresnel effect combined with the noise dissolves the the sphere This of course gives an added effect that when we change our camera position, it always gives a different kind of shape, which adds to our randomness. Now to make our shader work with the particle systems, we need to disconnect this dissolve slider and then use the UV node with the channel UV1, split it and then connect the values to our multiply node. For the light color, we'll use the R value and for the dark color, we'll use the G value. Now let's take a look how the particle system is made. The effect is basically composed of two particle systems, the horizontal and the vertical one. We can see that here. The only difference between the horizontal and the vertical particle system is in its shape. The vertical particle system uses a cone shape, while the horizontal particle system uses a circle as its shape. Now let's quickly go over the particle system settings so you can see how I made this work. So, since both particle systems are basically the same, similar settings have been applied to both of them. So let's start from the beginning. I changed the lifetime value to a random value between 1.5 and 4, the start speed between 5 and 10, the start size between 2 and 3, and the start rotation to a random rotation in all three axes. Now, I set the simulation speed to 2.5, but you can tinker around with this a bit to see how you prefer it. Then, in the emission, I set the burst count to 30 and the rate over time and the distance to 0. The shape is of course different, here is circle, for the vertical one is the cone, and in the case of the circle, its rotation is set to minus 90 in the x-axis. Now for the both particles, limit velocity over lifetime is applied, and the drag value is set to around 0.7574. And finally, the key part that makes this effect work is the custom data. The custom data must be enabled in the renderer, where we first set the render mode to a mesh, and then set the mesh to a sphere. We then apply the custom vertex streams and add the UV2 parameter and the custom Y, X, Y, Z, W parameter. Next, we can go back to custom data, enable it, and then set the X axis and the Y axis to a curve. Now you can see how I made those curves, and these curves basically control our dissolve effect for the bright color and the dark color. In this case, the X value controls the bright color, while the Y value controls the dark color. Now, if we modify these curves a bit, we can see how we can make the effect look way differently, in case we want to have more bright colors in our explosion, or in case we want the effect to dissolve more quickly, But in the end, it is up to you to tinker around a bit and see how you prefer it. The final setting I want to show you is how I configure the material. The material is an opaque material with the alpha clipping enabled, the dark color is set to this shade of grey, while the fire color is an HDR color, which has a value of 3, 4, depending on how you like it, and in this case the smooth step value is 0. So you might be wondering, why do we need the smooth step value at all? 
and that is so we can get a completely different style of our effect. As you can see, now we get a realistic style of explosion. This is all done by changing our smooth step value to 1, making our parameter transparent and setting the blending mode to alpha. Now of course, if we change the smooth step value to 0, we again get this stylized sort of look. I like it most at 0.5, because then we get the blend of 2. Now if you've enjoyed this quick little tutorial, please consider liking, commenting and subscribing, and if you're of course really generous, supporting me on my Patreon so I can continue making tutorials like this. Until the next video, bye bye.